It's the object of every farmer to probably leave his farm in a better condition than, than what he found it. We're continually trying to, or striving to improve the efficiencies of not only that farm, but of the value of that asset. My children uh, love, love being here. They are always very involved in what we're doing here on the farm. It's great that they are able to see these things and see you know, how we have to look after the environment for them um, so that they can still be doing what we're doing in years to come. My children are the fourth generation here now and if we don't look after these things, it won't be here for you know, my grandchildren you know, in future years. Cotton in Australia is grown, as we're probably well aware, from central Queensland, right through now to the Victorian border. The Australian environment suits that crop in through the summer we have reasonable temperatures and adequate moisture and reasonable soils. Cotton's able to withstand you know, some higher temperatures than some of the other summer crops we produce and that has an advantage particularly in some of the western areas. The operation we run here is rain fed. Uh, the farms that I'm operating I have no irrigation. Uh, we rely totally on the weather we have reasonably good soils that can store a fairly large percentage of our incident rainfall and we use a, a crop pattern or rotation. The primary purpose is to store soil moisture. Um, we look at our soil a bit like a ring tank for an irrigator or a water moisture storage. So that's, that's the primary purpose. The secondary purpose of that is that it also reduces the frequency of our primary crop which is cotton and that has a huge impact on the reduction of diseases and pests into that crop. We're all flood irrigation, we don't have any overhead irrigation or drip irrigation systems on this farm. We fill our ditches out of say the dam here or we do have a couple of bores as well. Where we are here we do have the north branch of the Condamine River running through us so we do have to be, you know, very careful with, with what's going on. Um, it's a, you know, there's a river system flowing through us. I suppose with the introduction of, of you know, Ingard cotton originally and then the Bolgard cotton has seen a huge reduction in, in insecticides. Growers would have seasons of, you know, seven, 17 to, to 20 insecticide sprays in a season. Last summer we went through the season with no insecticide usage. In our rain grown situation, the single biggest resource to our farm is our soil um, and probably for irrigation it's also the soil that's, that's very very important so on my farm I continually test that um, to know what my, what my nutrition is what my moisture status is on an annual basis uh, any decisions or any inputs therefore yeah that we add to our, to that system we know scientifically and uh, Quite, quite succinctly as to, as to why or what we need in that system uh, to drive the level of production that we're chasing. Ten years ago people would have been happy if they had a yield of you know three bales to the acre whereas now you know everyone's trying for four. Yeah there's just that much more potential with the varieties that we're, that we're growing these days which comes back again to our researchers and, and what's become available to us. So here we've got a temperature probe it's giving us a live temperature reading, which for cotton growers, it's another one of our environmental factors that we need to take into consideration at planting time. We need a minimum of 14 degrees uh, at planting depth for, for three consecutive days before we want to look at planting um, so that we'll get correct seed germination and emergence. This data is recording live back to a website and cotton growers through all the valleys here in Australia have, have access to that information. We can view it on our computers at home any time of the day and it's just a constant recording 24 hours. The research and development effort underpins the Australian cotton industry. It's an industry that is a pretty young industry and it's been built on the back of R&D and in the last decade we can clearly document a 40% improvement in water use efficiency. We've done work with our growers to survey them and we know that some 40% of their farm area is in native vegetation and that's really important for maintaining biodiversity. You know, we spend in excess of $20 million a year of grower money on R&D and, uh, and that's really focused on producing you know, the high quality and high yields that uh, Australian cotton is renowned for.
The CSIRO breeding program has been in place for 30 or 40 years now and it has been very consistent in the way it has gone about in selecting new varieties for Australian conditions and the Australian market conditions, so, so, so to the spinners that, uh, that buy our cotton. For spinners, the, the, the beautiful thing about Australian cotton is its length, strength, you know, good micron air and it's contaminant free. So th these are the four things that are spinners prefer and the spinners also understand that Australian cotton is always striving to be better as well. As far as responsible cotton production goes, Australia again has an enviable reputation. You know, there are regulations and laws in place to make sure there is no child labour or uh, pesticide abuses or human rights abuses. We really want to be recognised as being you know, responsible ethical producers of you know, a magnificent natural fibre and, uh, and really through our efforts um, drive cotton consumption and, uh, and that's, that's important because the other alternative is man-made fibres which are uh, produced, you know, they're oil based synthetics and uh, we have a magnificent natural fibre that has tremendous properties and uh, we want to make sure the end users recognise that uh, cotton is produced in a very responsible way. Something that's really surprised me is that the general public don't seem to be really aware of um, where the fabric that they're wearing comes from or where the products are made. Or if they're aware, they don't really question about how it's done. The reason that I came out to Kintyre in Pittsworth is that I wanted to meet a cotton grower and see where the product that I actually love working with actually comes from. So I wanted to see where it all starts. So as a grower, this is what we produced last year. That's last year's lint. And in amongst that, when we pull the lint apart, we'll find the seed. That's what the ginning process does in Australia, is essentially removes that, that seed from the lint. He comes back to us is this little fellow here. So that's the same thing, and that's our planting seed that we're going to use for next year. Our object is to plant that into moisture at this time of the year, around about two inches deep. And we're hoping that, that at the end of the season, in six months time, we're going to produce some more of this, which is our fibre, that you can then use to produce my clothing for next year. Australian cotton producers are incredibly proud of the modern industry. They've made massive advances over the last two decades as far as responsible and ethical cotton production goes. They've also made massive advances as far as their yield and fibre quality. And I think end users around the world uh, are learning about that and uh, are wanting to use Australian cotton more and more in their, uh, in their garments and, uh, and products. I would like to see our world actually moving away from this throwaway society where you buy rubbish that's washed and thrown away, doesn't last the season or lasts one season. I, I think cotton is really terrific in that sense. I think it gives us a, a little feather in our cap and a, and, a, and a skip in our step that we are able to produce at the world's best level. It's great to know that we can grow something here on our farm that then, then ends up in as, as fibre used all over the world by some of the top designers. It's just great to know that we can do something like that here on our farm and that it's so highly regarded across, across the world.